to watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think.com slash fumes. see oh beautiful people i created this video in response to the actor judge joe brown because i previously informed my viewers about me being on the receiving end of gaslighting slander and defamation of character tactics from random people that simply just can't handle the truth and we know that people will react to the truth that i present throughout my content differently some people will follow up on my research by doing their own research investigation, which I highly recommend and have been suggested to my viewers to do so ever since I created my channel. And then there's some people that will share my information that I present uh, with their friends and their coworkers and even their family members in order to spark the dialogue within their inner circles that will bring about a positive change within their lives individually as the end result. And then there are some people that will lash out things from the side of their mouth that has nothing to do with me, nor what I stand for. They're usually gaslighting in order to create a faux narrative about me as if they know me personally somehow, and then spread those same lies across the internet in hopes that I won't respond so that their false narratives will stick. But not when I'm still here. Now, some of you may be aware of the altercation between me and Joe Brown that occurred about a week ago, which stems directly from his jealousy and envy of me. And of course, the publicly verifiable evidence that supports the information that I present throughout my content. Slim wasn't even on my radar. In fact, he has been following me on Twitter for years now. And if you've been subscribed to my channel with any point in me being here on YouTube, you know I come with receipts, right? Here are a few tweets that he made in response to my tweet dated September 2nd, 2018. And here's another one dated August 22nd, 2019. Now, if I felt like it, I'm sure that I would probably find even more but nah, let James tell it. He'll act like he doesn't even know who I am for the cameras. Or is it for the views? Or is it in hopes to recruit me into their Greek letter fraternities so I can shut up and keep the truth away from the public secretly? You, you look, he don't want me to talk. Who are you? You know who I am. Be you polite. and your culprit community know who I am, right? I don't know you. Introduce you don't yourself. know me? Right, so James, let's not act like you don't know who I am because you would not be following me on Twitter for three or four years if that were true, right? And now this fool had the nerve to start a slander campaign against me beginning October 10th, 2021 on his Twitter and his YouTube podcast page, completely out of nowhere. Now, I wanted to show you his tweets, but at the time of this recording, I see that he has removed all of his previous tweets about me between October 10th to October 18th from his Twitter account. Somebody informed him to do that for damage control purposes, I'm sure. Now, keeping things professional and respectful on my end, on October 18th, I finally decided to respond to him, saying, that I don't think he's qualified to tell me that I'm wrong or anybody else for that matter concerning our identities. He doesn't have any historian credentials to stand on. Millions of the real Indians didn't die. We are still here and we were always here. Man, look, that statement was so powerful that it forced them to respond minutes later by saying that he has written briefs, but 
no books on American history. Then he tells me that I have to do the homework myself. I responded by saying, okay, buddy, just know that I'm a real person just like you are. So if you would like to have this discussion with me, just know that I'm all for it. I waited for some time to go by to see if he would respond to my invite. A few hours later, I added to this original tweet by saying, I don't believe a debate is his agenda. He may just be seeking out more information concerning this topic, and I'm all for it. But don't send shots my way just because you have more questions. That's not how it works. If you would like to have a discussion with me, reach out. Now, after this tweet, he runs back to his Twitter and begins to slander me again. He has since removed some of those tweets, but you'll be seeing the ones that he didn't remove dated from October 18th to October 23rd. But I recall him saying that I tell people that the Africans were brought to America by way of aliens or UFOs. Then he continued his slander campaign by calling me out of my name numerous times. And then he goes even further and says my mother had sex with aliens. Things that you wouldn't expect for an elder to say, especially one of his so-called high caliber, right? And by the way, these are the very same things he states again when I publicly addressed him for a second time on YouTube during uh, the Sister Bethy talk show that I'll be playing here in a second. But the first time I publicly addressed him on YouTube was during his podcast with some clout chasing messy little girl that has no home trainer whatsoever. Probably the reason why she's still lonely now because the part of this live stream when I showed up was so bad on their sake that they edited out the part when I popped up in that live chat, demanding the link to join their panel to address his slander. When I came on the panel, this Bama immediately mutes my mic as soon as I said one word. They didn't want me to say anything to them at all. James was so scared. He was so scared I might debunk his credibility. Here's the part of the video where she begins to read my comments in the chat. And watch how it's then edited, jumping straight into the middle of a sentence from James. Thursday with me and a judge. Where is he? He is always late. He's always late. Always late. Who knows what? And there's a giant tortoise that the earth is sitting on the back of, and it's swimming slowly through this ocean. How can you debate that? I... It's not more. even worth the breath. A fool is a fool, and sometimes it's a question of how big a fool can a fool be. Oh, and let me not forget the ask, why would they have the word copyright in bold letters as the lower third overlay of this live stream when that's not even the topic they were discussing? Sounds like somebody has something to hide now, doesn't it? At first, I found his constant slander towards me to be flattering until so this now 74-year-old decided to take his gloves off and use his age as an excuse to royally disrespect me, hiding behind that old saying, respect your elders, just to spread a false narrative about me saying that I don't respect my elders. And that is absurd for anyone to say. I would only respect those that respect me, simply because respect is earned and not given out automatically just because an individual is older than the other. Respect is earned by way of action. Age is nothing but a number. You treat others how you would want to be treated. So if disrespect is prominent throughout a conversation between the elder and the young buck, Age does not excuse disrespectful behavior for anyone, especially not an elder that's not acting their age to begin with. Like for example, this past May, I respectfully responded to the co-founder of the ADOS, Yvette Carnell, 
who is also an elder, I guess, via Twitter. When she felt the need to respond to my video that went viral on the internet due to me proving with hard evidence that Harriet Tubman is a fictional character created by an act of Congress and Sir Bradford in 1869. And since she addressed me respectfully and I responded to her professionally, things didn't escalate towards any form of disrespect between us. The content creator American Indian Truths on YouTube captured this entire exchange between myself and this politician. Listen closely as the conversation went like this. Just above my tweet, she says, I don't agree with his art history, but let's put the rightness or wrongness aside. Sometimes you have to ask yourself whether the content you are producing actually benefits your community or just causes confusion. What's the point? To what end? This is irresponsible. And then I respectfully responded by saying, it's not about that, Yvette. It's about what's right and what's wrong. And our people should not be lied to about anything, and especially our history. Then she responds by saying, and let's say Harriet Tubman was a lie. I believe she was real, but hypothetically, if she was a creation, so what? How did that lie damage our people? How did creating a black heroine harm us? Most myths aren't true, but they're empowering all the same. Your doc is reckless. And then I responded and said, it's not about what you may believe, it's about what you know based upon what you can actually prove. Then she said, as I said on my thread, even if you were right, I doubt that, it doesn't matter. Tearing down a black hero, be she real or just a creation, serves no one. It's just provocative for the sake of being provocative. I don't support that kind of irresponsible behavior. Never will. And then I respectfully responded by saying, I didn't ask for your support. You chose to respond. Once again, I posted hard evidence in my video and I leave it up to the public to respond by using their own mind to think. And then she said, you didn't ask for my support and I'm not giving it. On this, we agree. So let's end on this point of agreement. And I commented, done. Then I came back with my own tweet saying, mind you, people will wake up at different times. So just continue to be their alarm clocks. So the point of me showing you all this was that it was no disrespect present within our conversation. Now, before I get into what happened during my second public encounter with this sellout, Judge Joe Brown. Why she stinks so bad she can't get a bath, man. Your mama smell, man. I was over and there. And now he's talking about my mother. Don't look at him. Look, look, daddy, how, look how low he got a stoop. Let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Following the debut of Judge Joe Brown, the show's namesake judge became a reality TV star. But there's been a bunch of real-life drama that has followed him around for years. Clearly, Brown knows how to make headlines for all the wrong reasons. Following 15 years on the air, CBS axed Judge Joe Brown in March 2013 due to a salary dispute. The Hollywood Reporter noted that Brown had been earning $20 million a year, but CBS Television Distribution was looking to chop the figure down to match falling viewership ratings. Eventually, they pulled the plug altogether, triggering a headline-making meltdown from the reality TV star. Cameras caught a seemingly intoxicated Brown boasting about drinking and slamming his old show. When two women approached him for a photo, the situation got even more uncomfortable with the then 66-year-old telling them, I need you girls to be my daughters-in-law so you can take care of a man in his old age. Then he decided to up the creepy factor by adding, an old man can be a bad motherfucker. Oh hell yes, make an old man feel like a bad motherfucker. He concluded with a piece of wisdom, proclaiming, pretty women are insecure. It's easier to deal with pretty women if you know what to do. Now you see my 50-year-old wife, I do not deal with ugly women. Now we know for sure that he's very disrespectful to women. I mean, to the point where he just blatantly disrespects his own wife. 
In March 2014, what was supposed to be a regular hearing with Judge Joe Brown representing a woman in a child support case turned into a scene worthy of reality TV. Brown had a major outburst inside Tennessee's Shelby County Juvenile Court, which resulted in him being arrested and charged with five counts of contempt of court. According to Juvenile Court Chief Magistrate Dan Michael, upon his arrival, Brown took his sweet time meeting people and campaigning for votes before entering the courtroom. Brown was running for Shelby County District district attorney at the time. Following a 20-minute wait, he started complaining to Magistrate Judge Harold Horn about the delay. According to Michael, Brown started raising a ruckus that caused a commotion in the courtroom. Despite repeated warnings that legal action would be taken against him if he didn't quiet down during his in-court outburst, Brown reportedly escalated his verbal attack against Judge Horn, questioning his authority and becoming increasingly disrespectful, claiming, I don't recall that your name's ever been submitted, sir. This tribunal on a general session's court's authority is insufficient to establish you. Therefore, I challenge your authority to hear it. Horn summoned the bailiffs and the bizarre exchange saw Horn sentencing Brown to time behind bars, with additional days being added as he continued making rude comments. The tally ended up bringing his sentence up to five days, at which point security officers removed him from the courtroom. So right here, he does a little time behind bars for disrespecting a judge. Tennessee said bye bye to Judge Joe Brown in June 2016, when the state Supreme Court barred him from practicing law in Tennessee and placed him on disability inactive status. As it was explained, the verdict was sparked by his diabetes. Production company Celebritunity stated that the decision was made because, quote, Judge Brown is suffering from what hopefully will prove to be a temporary disability as a result of complications following from type 2 diabetes and the effects of prescribed medication for the condition combined with hypertension tension and stress. The status meant that Brown could not practice law up until the moment he could prove to the Supreme Court that the disability was no longer present. Interestingly, Brown reported the issue himself while he had filled out a petition stemming from his March 2014 court outburst. This, in turn, meant the petition was suspended indefinitely until he was able to revert back to active status. A year after the Tennessee courtroom incident initially took place, local judges refused to hear Brown's case, and once it got in front of the Tennessee Court of Appeals, the initial charges were upheld, sending Brown behind bars for five nights. As court papers from the appeal explained, an attorney was summarily punished for direct criminal contempt. The attorney appeals alleging numerous procedural errors and claiming that his actions did not rise to the level of contemptuous behavior. The verdict, Brown was out of luck and heading behind bars after all. This may come as a shock to you at this point, but apparently Judge Joe Brown fancies himself to be quite the remarkable human being. When he turned himself in to complete his short jail sentence at Shelby County Correction Center in late August 2015, he was met by a group of supporters holding signs. The Emmy Award nominee seemed to let all of the love get to his head, telling WMC Action News 5, I've always been about supporting the people in this county. That's what they're here to do is support me. Support me, you support yourself. See, and with him making a statement like that, he believes that everyone is supposed to submit to him. And of course, I didn't. He got the right one. The five-day sentence Judge Joe Brown served may have taken place in protective custody because of the TV star's high profile, but apparently it wasn't up to Brown's standards. Following his release from jail in early September 2015, Brown told Entertainment Tonight that being inside a jail is like being in the slave warehouse. The problem with being in a jail is not whether you have TV sets, radios, or air conditioning. It's the fact that you're confined against your liberty. So after spending five whole days in lockup, Brown's conclusion about jail was that it took away your freedom, which seems pretty obvious even without serving time. Turns out Brown was likely being melodramatic as Sheriff's spokesman Chip Washington painted a vastly different picture of the conditions Brown had endured behind bars. Brown maintains that his prison sentence was a farce and that there was no reason for him to be locked up, with the disgraced judge saying, 40 years I've never seen such a circus as they've got down there. However, he credited his short stint in the slammer with inspiring him, telling Entertainment Tonight, It firmed up in me when all this stuff was going on that I've got to come out of retirement and I've got to do a show again. With him saying that he got to come out of retirement to do a show? just proves that he's trying to rally up controversy in order to start up a new television show. 
According to E.T., Brown penned a proposal for a show called True Verdict as soon as he got out. One singer SZA told British Vogue she believes that women could be valued members of society without having to depend on men for their survival. She likely never expected to hear from one Judge Joe Brown. But apparently her comments on female empowerment really rubbed him the wrong way. So much so that he actually took a break from his busy schedule to Twitter slam the songstress. Brown went on the offensive, firing off, This is a selfish and foolish brat. While a few females like her aren't able to cope with men, the human race, children, and well-adjusted real women do need men just like real men need women. Here you go again, being randomly disrespectful to women. He was met with both support and criticism, but defended his original comment when someone tried to point out that SZA wasn't saying that men are unnecessary, but that we should not live in a society where one gender is more dominant than the other. The person added, she was empowering women. You took it out of context. Brown slammed back with various statistics ranging from percentages of people born out of wedlock to graduation rates for males as of 2011. He added, that is the face of the problem and it's not healthy. Judge Joe Brown may be a thing of the past, but the star still holds the small screen close to his heart. Several years after his successful show was canceled, Brown announced his return to television in 2019. But rather than focusing on courtroom drama, his series Hot Topics with Judge Joe would see the star pushing his opinion on various trending hot topics in more of a talk show format. Speaking about his new gig to Programming Insider, Brown boasted, This is an intriguing format for me because this time I get to talk with a qualified panel of other individuals about various topics, everything from breaking news to issues in pop culture, lifestyle, sex, and health. In today's tumultuous political climate, I think the timing is just right. So this was a talk show to push his opinions about hot topics, huh? So now you know that him coming out of nowhere to slander me and attack me on Twitter was a promotional tactic in order to promote himself even further. Now that you have been informed about James's long history of disrespectful behavior, you can now understand why I responded to him the way that I did during our second public encounter, when I was invited on a panel as a guest on the Sister Bethy talk show, dated October 24th, 2021. So here's my question. So now you're saying that you're Choctaw and that's what your grandmother and your great grandmother uh, pronounced themselves. Did they ever my call mother. themselves black? What I'm black too. No, I mean, did they ever call themselves black? Yes. My grandfather was very dark. My grandfather was very dark. He and one of his brothers, a great uncle of mine, murdered two white deputy sheriffs because they suspected them of participating in the lynching of another brother. But you know that has uh, nothing to do with your skin complexion. I've got a great grandfather that decapitated his master and went off to Canada. But you know that has nothing to do with your skin complexion. Like yeah, when a person says black, what are they referring to? Are they referring to their it's skin complexion? It's a state of mind. It is a generic category that deals with an ethnic identity. It bespeaks cultural antecedents, mm -hmm. shared experiences in this country, and uh, an ancestry. And it wasn't the being used during your grandmother's time. is African. It was that terminology wasn't being used during your grandmother's so time. What? So how was she calling herself black? So you just contradicted they, yourself. Excuse me. I mean, you just contradicted yourself. The term yourself. at the time was colored. The term one at the time was colored. One of my great grandmother mm -hmm. that it got from, she was not that. She was 100% Choctaw. But okay. she was allied with the colored folk, and she wound up donating one third of the land that Lane College up in Jackson, Tennessee is built on today. So now you're saying there's a difference between no, colored folk no and Indian folk. It's just what, no, there's no difference. Indian it's folks. just what to succeed. Hey, man, dude, what's happening? Homie, homes, you know, it all refers to the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a different word, but it's the same concept. So why, why promote something that we didn't call ourselves? We did. We called and ourselves that terminology? In 1965, we were insisting that we be called black. Mainstream media caught up with it. We decided we wanted to be Afro-American about two years later. Mainstream media caught up That's with correct. that. Then we went back to black. But before so the 60s, what were we words. calling ourselves? We picked it. Young now, black folk in college, mm -mm. on the That's streets, correct. in the communities. I agree. We picked I'm not disagreeing terms. with that. 
I'm not disagreeing with that. I said prior to that, what were we calling ourselves? Well, my father and mother's generation, they decided they wanted to be called Negroes again. Again? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So See, you mean Negro to tell me that they what will be was referred to when the Spanish were bringing importations I'm from Africa? With that. Sir Walter Riley and a few other ones. I'm familiar with it. Of Queen uh, Elizabeth. They were pirating and they were seizing shiploads of the transportees and they were selling them okay. for reduced prices. So you're In saying that they, the by Spanish word of mouth colony. they were saying we that, not what was written. Negroes. By word of mouth, that's what they were saying. Yeah, well, that's what they listed them in their advertisements. And written copies still exist. So it doesn't make any difference. So it doesn't make any difference. The Romans it, had a word for it, too. Okay, so, okay. What you're saying is, is that it doesn't make any difference what the government decides to call us. Not the government, what the people call you. What people? Because you said the that they were doing it by word of mouth. The culture. What people call each other and call their opponents are those they don't like. It's xenophobia. It's an ancient human characteristic. And you saying that your it grandparents went through that. for the different. Your grandparents went through that? What? This same xenophobia that you just described. Every human suffers from xenophobia. It's a human characteristic. Some of us overcome it. Can you prove that? No. You just have okay. to be aware of it. Sometimes okay. a self-experience is... Very illustrative of the point. Okay. There's a few things that you mentioned where you contradicted yourself. Um, How? I didn't that, contradict myself. I'm about myself. to explain it. I'm, I'm about not to explain once. it. You just I'm about didn't to explain understand it. it. Mm -mm. That's not that. I do you understand. You just didn't understand it. I, one second. I do understand. Because if you I don't didn't, understand I it, son. One second. Hold on one second. I'm not your son. You're not my father. Get well, that that's correct. a generic term again. Yeah, but once again, don't use those generic terms. Let's be that's real with you. That's because you don't like them. I I'm chose a, to no, use them. No, it's not See, because. There we go no, again. No, 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 no. Just Hold on. With illustrating you, my point. Once again, you're dancing. I'm just here to make you think. <laughs> Thank you.